So now I am going to invite uh, uh, you know uh, other speakers to share their experiences. So the first one I'll uh, 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 invite is Mr. Gopalan uh, to to share his views on uh, on the issues related to the fuel supply. Thank you, uh, Chairman. <coughs> you know, I actually I feel like an odd man out in this panel, uh, given that the fuel that we all depend in, in in my part of the power supply, power industry, comes essentially for free, and is not an issue, right? Uh, solar and wind, our power plants were one of the largest operators of solar and wind all over the world. And the approximately 10 odd gigawatts that we operate don't have fuel supply issues. So what I'll do is maybe I'll share my perspective of what is possible in India. And if you, if you look at it, I think my view is that in somewhere between, let's say, 7 and 10 years, India could have 50%, maybe I'll be even more specific in saying solar and wind, I think 50% of fuel that is required in India's power sector can come from solar. It might sound outrageous, and let me walk you through my thinking. What does it really mean? If, you, if I say that 50% of India's fuel supply can come from solar, then all the problems that we're talking about to that extent actually goes away. If you, if you uh, look at two specific segments, India has about 400 million people that don't have energy access or access to electricity. They, they survive based on kerosene lamps and don't get enough electricity. It's not that all of them don't have grid. I think grid reaches perhaps many of them, but there is no provisioning of supply for that. So if this approximately 400 million people, let's say half a billion people just for ease of discussion, are converted to solar microgrids, right? It is about 40% of India. And we think that economically the models are available today. I think without subsidy, if the government were to recognize distributed utility, a microgrid as a utility that is given a franchise area or a concession for 25, 30 years. I think the economics work out. We can supply power to the telecom operators in that village, three, four kilometers, get a power purchase agreement so the project becomes bankable, supply power to the households in an a la carte way. You know, we can give to the poorest of the households, we can give a telephone, uh, sorry, a charging point and one LED light and it will displace the kerosene cost, and they don't have to spend any more money. And perhaps you can graduate, and the postman in the village can perhaps have two or three lights, a fan, a television, and we can supply the power required for perhaps all of these points, and maybe we can charge them 500, 600 rupees. With that, the economic model works. We're not expecting subsidy. But what is required from a regulatory perspective is the government should actually recognize that utility and award them. This would take care of about 400 million people. And we believe that if the policies are right, this can happen perhaps in a 10-year period. The other part is 25 million irrigation pumps in India, which contributes about 20-22% of India's electricity consumption goes to that segment. That also, I believe, can be entirely converted to solar. It's just a coincidence, sir, that you are here today. Uh, I'm not saying this because you're here. I've been saying this since morning. If the irrigation pumps are converted to solar, you can relieve essentially 22% of India's electricity and thus the fuel-related issues for 22% of the 60% of India, you can then, you can convert it, and Karnataka's solar raitha policy, which Honorable uh, Minister here, Mr. D.K. Uh, Shiv Kumar, has actually launched, and I think there is where the, in Harabole, we are doing a first pilot in the country where the entire feeder, all the farmers are converting, and that's just a vision. You can imagine 25 million farmers converting to solar water pumps. It can be done. We'll relieve 125 gigawatts of fuel supply related issues. So even though the topic is fuel, I believe that one can aspire. I'm not going to put exact numbers, but in a five, 10 year period for half of India's energy needs. Yeah, they're connected to the grid and the, and the benefit of that is actually the farmer now will only use pumping to the extent he needs. So you preserve groundwater. When he's not pumping, he can be feeding electricity to the grid, supplying it to the grid operator, giving more energy. Not only are you removing the 20, 22% that is going into irrigation, but the farmer becomes a generator. Because he's a generator, you can give him a power purchase agreement and the project becomes bankable. You can use the priority sector money. You know, the, the RBI ED was here today, and he, they want to deploy priority sector 
money which is significantly undeployed every year. There is billions of dollars that don't. So you can capture that capital, give it to the farmers who will be the borrower, and suddenly you've created a whole new source of income for the farmer. Then you can imagine the impact you'll have on the development of the country. If you solve the power problem for 400 million people and 25 million farmers, that will come from solar, then you can imagine what the impact will be on GDP per capita of that half a billion people. So I, I think it can be a massive impact and you'll solve at least half of India's fuel supply issues. So I don't have too much to contribute on coal and gas related problems, but I think what the solar industry can do and what the sun god can do for us is do away the fuel supply issues, supply half of India's energy needs and dramatically transform the lives of half a billion people. You will see the impact on GDP per capita in, in I think, between five to ten years. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.